Hello, Sandra Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this wreath. It's a kind of a eucalyptus wreath with a faux wood background, and I'll be showing you how to do the lettering too. So it should be a good project. The uh, leaves are very, very easy. Should be a good beginner project. Uh, the words are a little bit more difficult, but I'll show you a few different tricks to help you uh, do them a little bit easier. So I've got my husband, Mark, here with me. Hey there, everybody. So let's get started. <laughs> We've got a fly in the studio today, so <laughs> we're not because we can hear him buzzing around. If you hear them. If you hear something bashing and smashing, that's just me that's trying just to kill me. it. Yeah, Mark trying to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is my example painting here. Um, threw this together pretty quick uh, just to kind of see. And I had a uh, posted it in my group there on Facebook and asked them if they liked it. And they all said, yes, let's do it. So we're doing it today. So I hope you guys stick around for it. I... Um, like I said, I'll be showing you some different types of lettering. I think lettering is one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, scares people. But there's some really uh, good little tricks that you can do to make it a lot easier. So I'm going to show you those and uh, show you about two to three different ways of doing the lettering that should make it a little bit easier for you. So that'll come later. Right now we're going to paint the background. <laughs> so I started out with a 9 by 12 inch uh, panel board. Uh, this is pre-gessoed, but I went ahead and covered it with white anyways uh, because the gesso is very tacky, uh, or not tacky, but it's uh, grip, it's grippy, gritty kind of. And uh, if we paint it over the top just straight to gesso, um, it might not uh, have the same kind of texture as this. So I don't know. I just I like to paint it even when I'm doing white canvas. I like to paint it with a coat of white over the top of the gesso. It just seems to accept the paint better for me. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just kind of map out where we want our lines for the shiplap, faux shiplap. And I'm just gonna use a soft uh, watercolor pencil here. Soft. Um, what are you laughing at over there? Uh, somebody wants to know if they can use acrylic paint for their nails. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that one time. I did that once and I regretted it because it did not want to come off. It, um, I did finally get it off with some, uh, with some alcohol. So if you do, <laughs> if you do it, have some rubbing alcohol handy because it, it sticks pretty well. I'm just kind of, ooh, already? Well, we just that's, started. That's the pre chat. Pre chat. Wow. Uh, Super chat from Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, thank you so much. So that's amazing. I think I'll just leave the disco lights. She on knew for the we were going to be awesome before we exactly. even started. It was just like, yep, yeah, this yeah. is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know if you can see those. I just kind of mapped out some lines. They're not really evenly spaced out. I just kind of did it by hand, but using the T square will help them kind of stay square for us and I'm just going to use my palette knife to scrape on some paint I'm going to use some white and actually when I did my example one here I just had um, some white that was dirty on my palette left over so <laughs> if you've got an old palette with some paint on it that you've you know got different colors on and that are still a little bit wet you can just kind of grab a little bit of that um, so I'm just going to touch in the very tip of it into a little bit of burnt sienna Grab a little bit of the green, grab a little bit of black, and I'm not really going to mix it all together. I kind of want it to be sort of streaky, so I'm just going to kind of tap through it to give it a little bit of mixing. But And I want to keep it fairly light. This is kind of white shiplap, so it's supposed to look sort of distressed, but not necessarily uh, colored, you know. So a little bit of gray. So I'm just going to scrape up just a little bit on my palette knife here and just scrape across these sections. We've done this before with credit cards. So you can use that if you want. Um, just going side to side mostly will help give that kind of wood look. Give the 
I think I like it better this way than doing it this way. So, don't worry about your lines. We can, I'm kind of trying to stay in the lines though, so that I don't have a lot of um, continuation of one color into the next section. It'll just help with our illusion of each one of these being a separate board, so. Just go side to side. I don't have to fill in the whole thing. Just kind of trying to add a little bit of texture to this. A little bit of interest in this white wood back here. The more paint you have on it, obviously, the thicker the section will be. But it kind of, if you're working on canvas, uh, you may want to put something up underneath if you're doing this scraping technique because canvas uh, you know obviously doesn't have a lot of support underneath so you wouldn't you know you may have trouble getting the palette knife to scrape for you well so I like to use either you know canvas panels that are uh, hard board or hard boards or something like that when I do pan painting with palette knives but you still can do this on canvas. Just put like a book or some magazines or something under your canvas to fill in that. All right, there we go. Isn't that cool? And then I'm going to put my, well, I'm gonna get my, my poor ruler is just gonna be all messed up after this. Actually, let me, I'll wait. I'll, uh, I'll try it with the brush, we'll see. So, Technically, at this point, what you would do is dry it, <laughs> and then you can use the ruler. <laughs> but I'm too lazy to do that right now, so I'm going to grab a little bit of black, touch a little bit of that gray in with it. What were you asking, hon? Maybe a little bit of brown. Oh, I was just going to say our mod Dom is back, and uh, she oh, just yeah. wanted to make sure it was clarified that use an old credit card. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, old credit card, not, yeah, not your husband's good visa. All right, I'm going to turn this just a little bit here so that I can kind of easily run this side to side. And I'm going to lightly, I've just kind of put a little, very, very little paint. You can almost barely see any on there. It's just kind of tinted it and you can even brush off a little extra um, if you need to, and I'm going to lightly dry brush, very lightly skim it over the line that I drew before. And here's, like I said, if you, if you want to, you can dry this first and use your ruler again and just kind of use the edge of the ruler to keep this straight. Go right up against that edge of the line. So we just kind of want like a little faded line so that it looks like our wood has a little bit of, whoa, another super chat. That's and awesome. another super chat from Johanna. Thank you, Johanna. And just some smiley and smiley face emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Johanna. And chat is mooing currently. Chat is moving? Mooing? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mooing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love it. More cowbell. <laughs> Oops, I was off camera there. Sorry. A little bit, I think. Who's not doing their job today? I know. You are. I'll just go to side cam the whole time. There we think. go. <laughs> I'm only doing it this way because I don't have... It's not wet. It's still too wet. We got a question for Mary. Yes. She'd like to know about how long after doing a painting should you wait to varnish? Uh, it depends on how thick the paint is. If it's thin, you can just do it kind of the next day or maybe two, maybe two days later. Um, if it's real heavily painted, like a impasto with a you know, palette knife type painting, um, I would wait a week. Just make sure, because it takes a while for the paint to cure. Even though it's dry to the touch, it's still not cured all the way underneath. So you don't want to seal the moisture into it with that varnish. So about six years? What? About six years. 
Six years what? To wait. I said six days. I said a week. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you don't want to be too sure. <laughs> too careful, I mean. Don't mess with me today. <laughs> you're making me confused. Oh, confusing <laughs> you while you're in your art brain. Exactly. Sorry. I can't think and paint at the same time. I can only do so many things. I can't keep up with your sarcasm while I'm painting. <laughs> nice to me well all right <laughs> since you pay me i'll be nice Do I, am i paying you ish <laughs> okay i'm gonna if your paint uh dries on your knife like this and i've had that happen before you can get that off with alcohol just like uh on my you know your nails alcohol will dissolve off the acrylic paint Pretty well, and you'll be able to scrape it off. But I'm gonna try to get this off before it all dries. Got some of it. I obviously didn't do a good job of it when I was doing the example earlier. Cleaning it. All right. So one last thing that I want to do is add a little bit of very dark. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use the palette knife for this. Just run it through that. Oh, do you hear that fly? It's, it's taunting me right here over my head. I went and got the fly swatter. It's been bothering me all week in here, and I can't have, haven't been able to catch it. It is ginormous. You know. It, it is like two to three times the size of a normal fly. He's just like, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> he might grab the fly swatter from me. Yeah, exactly. He might hurt you. <laughs> that weak stuff in here okay so I'm gonna set this uh, just below where I want the line to be uh, because you know when you set this up against the the uh, ruler there's a little space so I don't, I don't always set it right on where I want it to go I just set it for just a smidge below where I want the line to go and I'm just going to use that palette not run it right along the edge there well oh, didn't come off very good All right, let's try that again <clears throat> just scoop up a little bit more on there. I'm losing my voice today. I think it's allergy season. Oops. Shoot. Yeah, fall allergies are coming in. Mm -hmm. I started feeling it. Okay, there we go. See how it kind of just picked up a little bit. It's not going to be a solid line that way. We just using the palette knife will kind of help keep it from looking like a. <clears throat> solid liner. You could use a liner brush too if you wanted to, but I, I like the look of the palette knife. Kind of gives a little bit of a broken line. If you use a thinner paint, it actually works better for this kind of thing with the scraping, you know, trying, oh, he's right by my head too. He's like wanting to land on my head. This stupid fly. You're yeah, going to have to come kill him. You can definitely hear it in the microphone. I know. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Gosh, the joys of live TV or right? <laughs> live <laughs> live streaming. <laughs> and Mark noticed him like five minutes before we, not even five minutes before we were supposed to start. He stayed quiet all the whole time until and he's like, oh, there. Yeah, I, I try to spray it, but then the studio will be stinking oh, no. up. No, so. don't. Please don't. I don't like, I don't like. I don't let the pesticide guy come in the house either. I just don't like that stuff in the house. There's, they say it's safe for pets, but I don't believe them. If it's killing bugs, it can't be healthy <laughs> for you. You know? I don't, I don't care what they say. Okay. There we go. I'm having a hard time getting this to come off today. I'm distracted. Mark's walking up around behind me here. <laughs> it's hard to concentrate. Be very, very quiet. Yeah. Okay. I'm hunting flies. I just don't want too much paint on my life. It's There's a delicate balance between way too much paint <laughs> and not enough. So you kind of have to just practice with it a little bit. It's still not enough. Okay. This is taking way longer than it should. It's actually easier than it, I'm making it look. <laughs> there we go. 
Goodness gracious. Well, people are always complaining how easy you make it look. So okay, well. We're doing this for them on purpose. Yeah, I'm purposely having trouble with my palette knife today. Okay, well, good enough. <clears throat> Worked a lot better on paper. <laughs> I don't know if it's just catching on the canvas or what. I think I'm going to go ahead and use my brush and just supplement a little bit and just kind of put a few little nice straight lines in there with some of that black. Doesn't have to be everywhere. Just a few little spots. Most of this is going to be covered up by the wreath anyways, but some of it will show. Yeah, so we got people here from Iraq and Sweden. Wow. Canada. All over the place joining us today. That's amazing. They heard I was going to be hunting fly, I think. Yeah, they were like, I want to... They're just here for the fly. <laughs> okay, there we go. And at this point, if you want to, like if you wanted to add a little bit of color or... If you wanted to use, um, one of these days I need to do one of these with um, crackle paint because I think this would look cool with some crackling underneath. If you do crackle paint, you just, I would paint the background with maybe like a dark gray and then apply the crackle paste or crackle, you know, medium on top, let it dry and then paint over the top with the white paint and it would crack and kind of create these interesting, I need to do that in a video one of these days. It's a little bit. It, the only bad thing about it is that it kind of takes a little bit longer. You can't speed it up with hair drying because it messes up the process. So, Mark, you'd be out of job, out of a job. Don't want to hurt your feelings. I know. I haven't, I haven't used the the super blow dryer in a while. I've been trying not to. Yeah, you've got enough stuff to do, so I've been trying not to have too much need for it. I'm going to get my green out. Come on. So close. <laughs> you almost got him. Oh, man, that was so close. I wish I wish we had a camera on you <laughs> <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to fill up this whole space here. I'll leave a little bit, maybe an inch on the top and bottom. Um, so I'm going to kind of do the middle of where I want this wreath to be. And if you need to use a guide, use a plate or something like that to get your circle right, that's perfectly fine. And it might help even to have sort of a, an outline of, you know, where you want to start and stop your leaves. So say, you know, I don't want any of my leaves to go beyond this point or this point, you know. So you could have a larger circle around the outside and then a smaller circle on the inside. And that'll help keep your wreath even all the way around. I don't think you can see that at all. Sorry, I didn't want to do it. I don't want to do it too dark because this paint is still wet and I don't want it to pull off the paint, so. All right, let's put on some leaves. And really, you could do these leaves in any color. I think it'd be pretty if you did them fall colors. Um, I'm doing them with this kind of pale eucalyptus uh, leaf color because um, it's kind of any season but feel free to change it do whatever float your bow to be pretty with like reds and and uh, like a deep burgundy and red and oranges and golds for fall maybe So um, I used, on my example, I used a color called uh, Thalo Blue Green Shade, or Thalo Green Blue Shade, <laughs> get it right, um, and I added a little bit of burnt umber to it to kind of get that dark green, but you can kind of mix this color with Thalo Green Yellow Shade and Thalo Blue, which I use those two colors a lot, so I wanted to show you that it could, you know, it can be mixed basically the same way it's the same color um, just using the thalo green yellow shade and thalo blue and this one I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt sienna so I'll have two different colors to work with actually I wanted to do the thalo blue 
and burnt sienna over here too. Let's just have a few different kind of teal colors to pull from. And I'll also use the Thalo Green yellow shade. That's why I added it um, because I did add some yellow to some of the leaves to create a more bright color. So there we go. All right, so we got Thalo Blue and Burnt Sienna here. Thalo Blue and Thalo Green yellow shade with a little bit of Burnt Sienna on this one. And then this one is the Thalo Green Blue shade with Burnt, uh, with burnt Umber. No, yes, that's right. Oh Lordy, too many names to remember. All right, so I'm going to press my brush flat. I've got my Filbert now. I don't think I mentioned that. This is my number six filbert. It's got a rounded tip, so uh, it'll make the doing the leaves a little bit easier. But if you don't have a filbert, you can use a flat instead. If you just have a nice flat brush you want to use. And I'm going to go ahead and mix this with that gray that we've got over here. Isn't that a pretty color? So we've already got a good color. I'm going to use. I'm going to leave the dark there because I may want it a little bit darker later to do some of the veining and stuff like that. So I'm going to press my brush nice and flat. I have a lot of paint in my brush right now. Press it flat and I'm going to add a little bit of water because it's getting a little sticky. Spray it. You can also use a little bit of gla uh, glazing liquid. The golden glazing liquid could extend the dry time and allow your paints to be a little bit more workable. So I'll add a little bit of that in there, too. All right. So what color are your nails today? They're gray matters. It's called gray matters. So. Sounds brainy. I know. <laughs> they obviously don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the idea with the wreath is we're going to do kind of the, the outside leaves kind of facing out and then the in, inside leaves facing in. And I did kind of create um, sort of movement with the leaves. I, I went way too high there. That's all right. I kind of created um, movement around the wreath sort of in this direction. So these ones kind of come around this way. I'll just do it instead of try to explain it. It'll be easier to show you. Do some kind of in the middle and then have some sticking out all outside the edge of your thing there. And I did some quite large and some smaller just to vary the size of the leaves, give it a little bit of variety. So we're going to do three different values of leaves and then we'll kind of play with the colors and things as well. But right now we're just kind of laying in uh, bare bones. Do a nice big one here. And I'll show you, I'll slow down here and just kind of show you the way I'm holding my brush. So I'm holding it like this. I'm setting it down and kind of pulling in a in an arc and then pulling in the opposite direction that way as well. And then kind of if I need to fill it in, I, I will. Um, you can also kind of just do a leaf by setting down wherever you want the tip of the leaf to be and pulling and kind of smushing it down a little bit. Well, not that much, but get the idea. And then you can kind of come from the opposite side and sort of fill it in. Either way works. That's a weird looking leaf. Okay. These kind of paintings are so fun. They're very relaxing. This is a great... Don't try to get yours to look like mine exactly. You know, don't try to place your leaves exactly the same place. It'll stress you out. Just kind of... Do your own thing, have fun with it. Just kind of try to stay in the same general, you know, round 
shape here using the guides will help that stupid fly okay see so we kind of did these ones pointing downward somewhat they're kind of point inward as we go down and then the outside the same they're kind of pointing down and these ones are sort of com coming up around I'm just kind of vary the the shape and the direction that they all fit in they don't have to all kind of go in the same direction let's grab some of this color here I'm going to add some white to it we have way more of this than we need I don't know why I have this much paint out I just got busy talking about how to mix it and mixed way more than we need that's all right <laughs> now that I've got this big palette I notice that I go big with my paints I'm using more paint I'm being a lot more messy when I had the little palette when I was using my plates I was a lot a lot more careful about where I placed my paints and how much I used but now I'm just like wow <laughs> Look at all this space. Let's fill it. <laughs> Funny. Okay, now I'm adding white to it. These colors are going to be almost identical. This one's got burnt sienna instead of burnt umber, though, so it'll be a little bit warmer, maybe a little bit slightly different. Now I'm going to start filling in with this kind of middle color, and I'm going to fill in around and sort of overlap some of these leaves. Go over the top of some of the ones that I've already done try to fill in some of these empty spaces so eventually we're going to have all this middle space filled in so start to fill that in look for gaps we also want to make sure that we're going outside the lines in some of these too so don't do them all in the middle kind of want some of them going outside the lines Big one right there. He's just taunting us now. He's just, he's like a dive bomber. He didn't get to be so big and old. That's right. By being stupid. <laughs> he's, he's a Moby Dick of flies. <laughs> People are going to be like, what the heck? Watching this movie play. Yeah, if you're just joining us, we have a special guest fly in the <laughs> studio that's <laughs> trying to get on mic here. Keeps flying around, buzzing my head. Trying to... oh. But we do want to welcome you if you are first time to our channel. We uh, do these shows twice a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. And all about trying to teach you how to paint in a fun, encouraging, relaxing environment. Take the mystery out of it. Uh, it can be scary learning a new skill, but I totally firmly believe after teaching for many many years that anybody can learn to paint don't have to have talent you just need to practice and know kind of have a little bit of guidance and that's where I can come in and help you hopefully provide you some projects that are doable and easy to accomplish and I would say start out with the beginner projects. Any of the projects that say beginner in the title, if you're first time to painting, don't start out on the advanced levels paintings. That, that'll that just cause frustration. So, like Mark was saying, you don't start out skiing on the diamond slopes. So, <laughs> why we just decided some, somewhere along the line that you had to, if you didn't have talent, or, you know, that if you didn't sit down and paint a painting for the first time and have it look, you know, exactly perfect, that somehow you don't have talent. 
It's not true. It just means that you need to practice and you... I did not know how to paint at one time myself, so... What? It took me many years to learn. Are you sure? I'm sure. All right, adding more white now. And the third layer. There we go. We need it just a little bit different. Different enough that we can kind of see it against the other colors. And so now we're going to fill in all of these gaps. And if you have too, too wide of space and you can't get it in one leaf, just uh, leave it and we can come back and do another leaf later. Because I'm going to want some of these. I, I don't want all of our dark leaves to be covered completely in the so we might add a few more of the darker leaves in here in a minute. Is he going to make an appearance? Oh man, he just died by my head. Kill him, honey. <laughs> need you to stop him. Alright, I'm going to grab some the um, yellow, cadmium yellow. Cadmium green. Uh, why am I saying cadmium? Mm -hmm. Thalo green yellow shade. It's that fly. He's messing with my head. Thalo green yellow shade, just to do another light color, but that's going to have a little bit more of a yellow tint to it. And we'll add a few of those in there too while we're doing this. really don't overthink it. I honestly, I think it, it does looks better sometimes when you just kind of do it quickly and not, don't think too much about where you're placing every individual leaf. You can always kind of go back and um, you know, add more of a certain color if you covered up too much of it. Let's do a darker one right there. I've run out of white. Mark, you're quiet over there today. Well, I was checking to see if there's any interesting fly facts. <laughs> Don't. No? Okay. No, that's gross. All right, well, anyways, if you're gross. new to Angela's channel... Go ahead and subscribe. Please do. Yes. Give it a thumbs up for the video. Down below in the description is uh, all the paints that she's using or leaving on her palette there. Mm -hmm. uh, links to to buy supplies and paintbrushes at the paint at the brush guys mm -hmm. with a five percent off using the discount code. Angela Fine Art. Thank you very much. And also links to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I have to say we have the best Facebook group out there. Yeah. They're pretty amazing people. We've got, I've got two Facebook group or well, two that I do. And then one that I do with another YouTube artist, Cinnamon and Cooney and it's called Angeloni. And they're, they're a lot of fun. But my thankful art one, I do art chats on Monday with them. It's kind of actually being on camera for a change instead of just my hands. <laughs> so that's fun. And then I have the one oh, with my Patreon folks and we they get to vote on what we do and that kind of thing. So they... And some behind the scene pictures of a fly. <laughs> Did they? No, I haven't been able to get a picture of it. But no, they get behind the scenes. That's right. Pictures and videos. And we do, and... do detailed tutorials on their art chats mm -hmm. on Mondays. We're painting animals this month. We did a pug on Monday this week. So that was fun. All right. So now I'm just kind of looking in here, trying to find any little gaps, any little spaces. 
and uh, see if there's any places where I want to uh, pull the leaf. Like I, I think this area over here maybe needs a leaf kind of coming off the side. I'm gonna grab some of this blue green color here that we made with the phthalo blue and burnt sienna. I love this color. Do a couple leaves with this. You know, people earlier were saying that these kind of look like magnolia leaves. Mm. I'll take the word for it. Yeah, I don't know what what they look like exactly. I think aren't they like big and flat, shiny? Yeah, I think so. I wish we had some way to look that up. <laughs> uh, let me go get the old encyclopedia out. Yeah. Hold on a sec. <laughs> I remember having a set of encyclopedias. We did too, yeah. It was a big thing. I think we actually bought it from a traveling salesman mm -hmm. kind of a thing. We door did. Door to door. Front, yeah, door to door, door salesman. He sold us a set of encyclopedias. Yep. I used it too because we. I think I'm trying to remember how old the boys were, but I know I definitely used it for a long time. I want to say Nathan might have used it in school when he first started school. Probably would have. All right, so I want to add a little bit more of this dark in back over the top, obviously. So I'm going to... And I'm kind of... Uh, when I add a leaf, I'm kind of now looking at where there's a gap between two leaves. That would be kind of the natural place that uh, maybe another leaf might pop out from. So kind of using that as a target area. Maybe grab some of this lighter color here with this one. Okay, now I've got multiple colors on my brush. I'm gonna just kind of load it with the darker color and then swipe through the lighter color on top. And I'm going to find some of these that I might be able to add a little highlight to if they're poking out uh, just right. Maybe not that much. Just to add some variegation to the leaves here. I could have actually loaded them this way to begin with, but just adding a little extra detail to these. Press this flat. Use the dark color here. Add a little bit of maybe veins to some of these just by using the edge of my brush. These are going to look a little bit messy at first, but we'll clean them up with little high highlights and stuff. What are you laughing at over there? Well, I commented in chat that I think I may have hit the fly in flight because I haven't seen or heard of it. I haven't either. You might have gotten it. But uh, now everywhere, um, might be a zombie fly coming after us. <laughs> Somebody said a walker. Let's <laughs> <laughs> hope not. The ghost fly haunting my studio. 
excuse me. Do you have a ghost fly haunting my studio? Yeah. <laughs> Just hear random buzzing every now and then. From nowhere. <laughs> I think oh, we'll have so to move weird. then. Huh? We'll, we'll have to move then. Yeah. All right, my paint is getting way too sticky on here. It's just not moving, so I'm gonna clean that out. Clean it out really well. That was all still stuck down in there. All right, now we can probably get some better highlights on some of these. I'm going to use the white now and just mix that with what's on my palette there. A little bit of the green just to tone it down slightly. And just pick a few of these to add some brighter highlights to. Where the light catches it, it'll it'll be look like it's turned a little bit. So if you want these to kind of look like they're sort of turned on their side and things like that, then we can add a little bit of white. Some of these that are darker, we can add kind of a medium color to them. Just. Really, you can stop at any point where you like it. If you decide you don't want highlights on your leaves, then leave it. You don't have to do this part. Just adds another little detail. Not, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, and I'm just kind of slightly skimming it over the top of these leaves to sort of catch the catch the paint or on the canvas, but without putting down too much paint. Right. Fun, huh? Oh yeah, baby. It's super very fun. kind of a whimsical. It's not supposed to be, you know, super realistic here, so don't get too stressed out if it's not looking like detailed realistic leaves. I feel like this one needs some leaves going in the opposite direction. They're all kind of turned this way so I'm going to do one poking out this way to sort of break that up right there. Do another one right there. Okay. And they're all not going to be laying completely flat either. You know, some of them are going to be kind of sitting on their sides. So you can also go back in and do just a few that look like, like little lines. Um, you got the hand farts going again. Oh, do I? I keep doing that. Sorry. <laughs> Hashtag hand farts. Don't worry, I'll cover for you. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody say something again about the noise? So, no, I I heard it. You heard and it. And so I, I cut it off before chat hears it. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, since we're delayed a little bit. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. 
it doesn't record it right away after I do it? Well, you know, what we're, what I see in here is about 20, 30 seconds ahead of when everybody else sees and hears it. Right, but it's still recorded, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's recorded. So, but what I'm saying, though, is that before they hear it, uh-huh. I've already covered it up. So by the time they hear it, I've already, they'll hear us talking about it. I don't know. It doesn't I, show up in chat. Chat's delayed because the video's delayed. Never mind. Back, I, I back to painting. It. That's okay. Neither do I. <laughs> it's magic. It's magic. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. I think that's pretty good. So I need. I do need you to dry that for me real quick, honey. I think stick man gets a fly today. Yeah. Oh, he gets a fly. All right. <laughs> what do flies look like? I guess I can figure it out. Here's Stickman. He's our mascot. Mark drew him, and we add something to him every week, depending on whatever it is we are painting that day. So we'll add a little wreath hanging off his arm here. I don't know. It doesn't look like much, but it's a little bit of fun. And we can give him... A little fly friend, too, maybe. Since Mark asked for it. We'll do just do a little black dot here sitting on top. It looks more like a bee than a fly, but you get the idea. All right. <laughs> Should we do R.I.P. on the fly? Fly. We'll do R.I.P. Fly. It's like a memorial wreath for the fly. Too much water. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. That cracks me up. This is our little bit of fun. Sometimes fast painting, you know, just having a little fun. Don't think too hard on, on it. it. can be. Oh, look at the fly. I know, I put a RIP on the wreath for him. So. <laughs> 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 I was proud of myself. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna put our words on here. And the first thing I wanna do is figure out where I want my words. Actually, they're probably gonna fit almost straight between these two lines here. So you'll want to use chalk or something else uh, that you can erase easily to kind of figure out where you want it. This is my midline of my wreath there. So yeah, it will be just about smack dab between those two that we'll want our words, you know, depending on how big we want them. I'm going to go just below this one. Across, I'm going to use, I'm going to use white. You won't be able to see it much, but I'll go just above it on this side. We'll be able to see it on our leaves, though. And don't press down too hard because this paint is still cured. Even though it's dry to the touch, it's still is not cured. So it will lift off if you press down too hard. All right, so first trick that I do when I am doing lettering is you can create little boxes. So you can figure out how many words, how many letters you've got in your word. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can make eight boxes on here. Uh, so that would split right down the middle. So we'd have a split here, and then we'd have four on this side, and four on this side. One, two, three, four. You get the idea. And then you'd fit your lettering in here. And if you're doing it by hand, that's the way I would suggest you do it. I did mine by hand as well. So um, I just drew it out with chalk. Let me get my yellow chalk. I used yellow chalk. And let me 
Let's see, so I'm going to come right off the end. I always leave a little bit more room for the first letter because I want it to be a little bit bigger than the rest. Page. No, let me see. One, two, three, four. Because we want the fourth one to be kind of in the middle there. So we want these to be spaced correctly. There we go. And really, it's not going to be perfectly in the middle since this one is going to push everything over just a little bit. But I think that'll be about right. And then I would just draw in my lettering in each one of these sections. And if you have terrible handwriting, you can still do this, but print out, find a uh, font that you like. That's uh, most of the fonts are you can download from websites like DaFont and uh, it's D-A-F-O-N-T, it's a real thing. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's got tons of fonts there. Most of, most of them are free for personal use, so if you're not uh, selling them. These ones are um, ones that are royalty free that I found. Great Vibes and Clicker Script, different, two different ones here. And um, so if you don't want to draw it by hand, what you can do is you can still write in your, you know, do your two lines for where you want your boundaries to be. And then try to print out the words on paper that are the same size. Now, if you're using a huge canvas, you can still do this. Just make your lettering bigger to fit the canvas. So you can do, I've done it before where I've done like one word one letter per one or two letters per page to get font big enough for whatever you know murals and different things that I was doing so um, you would set it down here get it you can even trace it onto tracing paper if you want to I don't usually do it I just try to kind of eyeball it make sure that this is level and then use some graphite paper set it underneath and trace over the top of your letters and I do I do both sides so I just go ahead and do the whole square um, do all the way around it and I go just inside the line so I don't go right on the edge of the letter I go just inside of it and then when I fill it in I can use a marker they have these paint markers and I put the I included this one in the link down in the description this is a Molotow it's acrylic paint inside of it and it's refillable and um, it's got a great little tip and it you don't even have to do your lettering with a brush that way you can just fill it in right with your little marker pen right in between the lines that you've done on your canvas. Makes it really great. It dries just like acrylic paints and you can varnish over it and all of that. So you don't have to paint it. Um, so that's one of my favorite methods. I have a girlfriend that has a, um, has a paint party place and she used those paint pens. They have all different sizes and everything. And she did a lot of lettering and that's what she used almost exclusively. And they were really great. So. Put that aside there, get that. Oh, I did want to do one more thing before we start the lettering. I want to add a little bit of vines with my burnt umber here. I'm going to grab the liner brush, add a lot of water. You can leave this part out if, if you don't want to have to do this. It's fine. I'm add a little tiny bit of green to it to darken it up a little bit. And we'll just add a few little vines kind of coming down. Just wiggling the brush side to side. You can do kind of curly cues if you want to get fancy with it, but just a few. I've zoomed in kind a little bit a more little. Oops. so that people can see okay. the thin lines like that. Okay. 
Well, that didn't work that out. That didn't work out very, very well. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just eat some candy over here. What? I'll just, just eat, eat some candy, candy over okay. here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Put my paint here. What may not be a good idea? The bag is very crinkly. Oh, <laughs> make noise. Okay, one of the things I did want to show you too, this is my painting from a few weeks ago. Um, if you're using the graphite paper, it tends to rub off in places that you don't want it. Um, that's really common. Um, so I kind of drew on my white canvas here. This one was had a white background. So I did it on purpose. I used the graphite paper and I drew a line with the graphite paper to show you if you use Clorox disinfecting wipes or you know any kind of bleach wipes, wipes you can rub off it comes right off. You see that? So it works for pencil too. So if you used a pencil lead on it um, I'll do a pencil, I'll show you. You can draw with the pencil and then you can use the Clorox wipes to wipe off any part that you don't want on there. So it's a little, nice little trick. Don't even need an eraser because usually when you use an eraser it just smudges. It doesn't actually lift it off the canvas like the bleach wipes do. And then I usually use a little bit of water on a damp cloth and to wipe off any of the bleach residue off of the canvas so no charge for that one that was a, that's a good there, there again I got that tip from my friend Lane who owns the paint party store oh she does she used to she doesn't anymore she moved sadly all right so we're gonna do gold on this you can use any color that you want that's kind of you know contrasting enough um, if you want, don't want to have to have any kind of see-through, the gold met metallic paints are kind of see-through, uh, a little bit transparent. You kind of see the leaves through if you look at it at the right light. So if that bothers you, what you can do is do your first coat with a color that's similar. So like a yellow oxide or something like that to go underneath the gold. Uh, and then put the gold on the top, and that way it'll cover up anything. But you know, use an opaque color that's similar to whatever. So if you're using silver, I'd probably use like a light gray or white, and then do the silver over the top. It's just so apparently FYI. you said you said something about bleach wipes. Everybody's thankful for your tips. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, it because I I had somebody in the group. Uh, she she said she messed up her painting. Because she transferred on the deer painting from a couple from like I was I put it up in the living room because I liked it so well. It's not in here anymore. <laughs> oh, here's the, here, this one. She, so she had painted the whole background and she transferred on the deer and it got it got smudges all over around the canvas and I guess she you know she thought she ruined it. So, um, but yeah, you can just wipe those off with the bleach wipes. And so that happens. Let's do the lettering. Right, I know I'm, that was probably really loud. Sorry, guys. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad? Okay. All right, so two brushes that I like to use for lettering here are long flat, like the quarter inch flat. Any good flat that comes to a nice crisp edge, that's what you want. Um, or a nice round that comes to a good point. I, I prefer using the flats because I like kind of that calligraphy sort of look on my lettering, but that's totally your preference, whatever works best for you. So, and I did not write these out, so I probably need to do that real quick. So I'm using a fluid acrylic. This one is the golden uh, iridescent 
gold fine. Um, I like using fluid acrylics for lettering, it's just uh, a, a lighter, um, thinner acrylic. So if you don't have this, you can just add some of that glazing liquid to your heavy body acrylics to get it to this kind of more fluid um, state. It'll make it a lot easier for your lettering. So I'm going to load my brush up by kind of pressing it flat on both sides, making sure that I've got a nice sharp edge on the tip of it. And I'm going to tilt my canvas so that I have an easy um, left to right action. I'm going to hold my, my brush very close to uh, the end, right on that silver part, just like I would a pen. So we're going to, uh, well, I'm going to move my hand a little bit farther back for this one because I've got a little bit of space here that I want to fill up. But um, depending on the kind of script that you're doing, you're going to want to not rotate your hand. So I'm going to figure out the angle so that I get a fine line and I usually do kind of a 45 degree angle on it. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to do a, a T a little bit different than I did before on mine. I'm going to do like this, up, back down, and I'm not turning my brush at all. I'm just letting it do the work. I'm kind of guiding it. So I started here, I kind of went up, I went across and see it's getting thicker as I go across and then as I tilt it up this way it's got that angle. Let's do one here. Like that. So it's kind of like calligraphy. Kind of, yes. It's very similar to calligraphy, yes. Yeah, this kind of painting for sure is definitely calligraphy type script. Okay, when you can answer, I got a couple of questions. Okay. Go for it. Okay. So the first question is, um, why do people usually put red behind gold? Oh, you can, I don't know, it's, it brings out the kind of the warmer tones in it. I don't tend to do that, do that, but yeah, that's. Okay. I like that answer. Mm -hmm. And then Deborah wants to know, do you normally mix fluids with the white when painting? Like, do you use other, like a, other agents, I guess? But you, but you, I think you just use pretty much white spray mm -hmm. most of the time, right? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, the fluid acrylics is more, it's not, it, uh, it's more just to, um, give it, uh, make it easier to flow on here. It doesn't really, uh, have to do with the opaqueness of it. You can, because the, there's some fluid acrylics, like fluid acrylics that's, uh, titanium white or carbon black. Those are definitely opaque colors. So, um. Usually I add white to a color if I want it to be more opaque. So I could add it to the gold, I guess, if I wanted to make it more opaque that way. But it would dull it. Whenever you add a solid color to a metallic, it dulls the metallic part of it. So I don't tend to do that. I usually just paint over the top of a color so that it's sort of like a glaze on top of it. But that's preference. I think... And this painting, I didn't mention this before, but I was watching all of the news reports and all of the stuff coming out of Florida and Texas over these hurricanes. So I thought this was a good, timely reminder. We're thankful for. For, for the people who were able to get out of there safely and get through all of that safely. So, and I'm praying for the families who lost their belongings and homes and all that stuff. It's right. very sad. 
hopefully it's just stuff that can be replaced. Exactly, exactly. As, as tough as it is, you know, we can always buy more stuff and rebuild. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so we're dedicating this to the folks that have been going through all of that. Make this a little bit larger. You can actually have another line here if you want to to show where to put the top of your smaller cat case letters too. It'd be helpful to do that. Somebody wanted to know, could they use rubbing alcohol to remove the uh, the lines? I'm not sure if that works. I've never tried that. You could you could try it. Yeah, it yeah. would probably, I mean, I think it might. It might remove paint. your paint. Yeah, yeah. Because since it's a, since it removes acrylics, I don't I don't think that I would do that. So definitely do it on a test board. Yeah, or something for sure. To the side first. For sure. Okay, so there's our lettering. So pretty. We might need a second coat on it because it's definitely uh, transparent-ish. And then uh, what I did to kind of make it stand out a little bit more is I used a little bit of the burnt umber with my liner brush. You could use a pen if you wanted to or even a colored pencil or something um, to do this part. You don't have to use a liner brush. And I just kind of picked the one side. I decided to go kind of below and to the right. Um, so I went right up underneath and on the right side of all of these with a line just to kind of give it a shadow. Make it a little bit more defined against that greenery. We can zoom in if you need to. I can try to go slower and make sure that I'm staying on camera. I'll try some side cam first. Okay. Mm, I'm a fan of side cam, but I'm not sure about here. Yeah, I don't know. We'll switch back. Details. All right, zoom cam. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Hey, at least you spelled it correctly. <laughs> Do we want to go back to a first birthday party? No, we don't have to talk about that. Okay, so we won't talk about how you misspelled birthday on Nathan's on birthday first cake. birthday cake. Yeah. No, definitely won't talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I left out the T on. No, no I left the out H. the H. He had a very happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all like, yay! <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> It's a letter. Say birthday. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I know how to spell. We is educated. <laughs> Don't make me have serious lettering here. I can't do it when I'm giggling. <laughs> but yeah, I would, uh, you know, if you're. If you're nervous about doing this on a canvas, I would definitely practice. Get some tracing paper out, set it over the top of your lettering, and um, I'll do that real quick. Show you how that works. I guess you're way zoomed in here on the tracing paper. I, I zoomed out a little bit. Necessarily endorse that, friend. I don't. I just happen to use it. My brush, brush in my mouth. Well, let me show you with the uh, with the liner, with the other brush. So um, with the round brush, you do it a little bit differently. So with the flat brush, you just kind of change the angle, and that's why I think I prefer it because I think it's a little bit easier. With the round brush, what you do is you change the um, the pressure. So you press a little harder where you want the line to be fatter. And when you want it thinner, you kind of lift up on it. See how that works? You can kind of see it. So I would practice this a few times on paper until you get kind of comfortable with it and then do it on your canvas. Um, using tracing paper is great because you can practice the same letter 20 times if you need to just to get it. All right, okay, go 
back to this. But lettering doesn't have to be scary. It can be it can be done very easily. The paint pens are your friend for sure, and I don't feel like you are cheating by using them. They're not that too expensive, and since they can be refilled, they're actually a pretty good investment. I have one that's in white, a black, and gold and silver. Those are kind of your basic colors. They, they'll get you through most most paintings. And then they, I mean, they have them in pretty much any color. They have some that you can fill yourself that are that are blank. Uh, let me see. This is dry enough. I'm going to very lightly try to get rid of some of these chalk marks. Now that I've got this paint down. So that wasn't too bad, hopefully. So you can transfer it on and paint it by hand, or you can transfer it on and paint it with the pen. You can do your little squares and write it yourself. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you too that's really helpful is that if you are a font fiend like I am and have to have all the fonts that they have. Font geek. Font geek, yes. Um, print out a little cheat sheet for yourself. You know, type out uh, in each font the alphabet and that way you can have a quick reference. Um, to see what one you might want to use if you're using them a lot in you know in your artwork like I do and I also you know refer to these when if I'm trying to uh, come up with something for um, you know for a logo or or some sort of a project a letter whatever you know I'm doing flyers or something like that um, it's easier to you know when you have 200 fonts on your computer the the font little picture is this big and you sometimes it's hard to remember what font what that font looked like so if you have something like this you can quickly run through and go oh yeah that's the one I want it's called Looney Tunes or Toonie Loons or whatever you know and and then you can go find it and use it so anyhow there's another little free tip for you man all kinds of tips today. a lot of font tips yeah we did I used to do a lot of a lot of uh, lettering a lot of it but uh, a lot of murals with the lettering. That's what. So that was fun. Up on letters. <laughs> doing, doing letters. <laughs> yeah. Not so much anymore. It's much, much nicer to be able to sit in, in the house and just paint for you guys. <laughs> Enjoy that a lot more. All right. And then I can go back in here with my second coat of gold if I feel like I need it and just kind of darken that up in a couple places. It's not going to go completely solid so you're still going to be able to see a little bit of the green through it but that doesn't really bother me. Okay so we got uh, some questions. Yes. Uh, what would be some other recommended colors to use if they don't have gold to do the lettering? Um, you could use a, like a yellow oxide would be pretty you know um, or even gray like a dark like a dark gray black um, color I think would be really nice on this. Brown would be pretty, like a deep uh, burnt umber. Um, I would either go very light, uh, well, I would definitely either go really, really dark or light and have a dark, you know, dark fill in around the sides so that it gives you a little contrast against the lighter and darker colors here that are happening. Okay. There we go. And then somebody asked, uh, are mm -hmm. there varying size tips to the paint pens? Like, could they Yes, there are. Different? And the okay. one I like for lettering is the 1.5 crossover tip. This is the difference. This, the silver one has the bigger tip. It's a little fatter. It's a little harder to get the fine, uh, the fine detail with that one. Um, and then this is the crossover tip that's more finely pointed. It's a 1.5. I'm not sure why it's called crossover tip, but that's what it's called. So, and then the two, mil two millimeter round tip, 1.5 millimeter crossover tip. So, and then they also have them that are, you know, uh, I, this is another brand that I like to use sometimes. Um, the acrylic uh, Montana brand. 
and they have you know quite large ones there's black and then there's very very fine small ones but I tend to like the Faber Castell and uh, Sakura ones lately I like these better than if I'm doing finer line, lining I just find that okay. they're better so I don't okay. know and then somebody asked, were there flowers on your other? Yes, I need to put the flowers. I did notice that, so I need to add the flowers. Okay, I'm gonna, I guess I won't sign it yet. Yeah, that, that we would can be. We sign it until we that, put the flowers That's against on the it. rules. Yeah, I think it's against the rules. And the uh, art SWAT team would come, <laughs> not just the police. They come busting through the window here. <laughs> Don't touch it. Drop You've the brush, man. Drop, drop the brush. Drop the brush. Heck, I've painted over. I've painted paintings after I varnished them before. You can do that. I've I've decided I wanted to make changes to the, to paintings well after they've been painted. So I've had people bring me their paintings and want things added to like the nest ones. I've had people add add want me to add eggs to their nest paintings because they had another child. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of burnt umber here. And I really just kind of did little tiny random dot flowers. They weren't really anything special. Just just add a little something, maybe like baby's breath or something like every, that. Every flower special. True. <laughs> Are you a special flower? <laughs> Me personally, of course. Like a special snowflake. <laughs> Are you a special blossom? That needs to be a thing. We need to have that on our shirt. I'm a special blossom. <laughs> Speaking of shirts, next week yeah. we should have our t-shirt shop open. Yeah, and baby. we've got five shirts to give away. Ooh, nice. So we'll I be doing I that. I hope I win. I know. <laughs> Not you. Yes. I oh, I can't win? You can't win. No. All right. Well, I'm going to make you buy one. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm buying the Stickman one for sure. <laughs> Yep, we got Stickman, we got the bear and fox, the rooster, and a logo shirt right now. And then I think we're working on a poppy one, or the red poppy as well. I'm not sure I'm liking this. And yeah, I think we'll do it for our 90,000 90, subscriber show. So be sure you're like, uh, sharing this video share with your friends share it. if you're painting these along with me the thing one of the things that helps so much to get the word out is if you are posting it on your social media and showing people what you're painting <clears throat> grab the link from the video if you don't mind and post that along with your painting that way we can uh Get, as soon as we get to 100,000, we got some really cool stuff for you guys to give away for the 100,000 show. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so we'll, we'll do the t-shirts for the 90,000 and and then hopefully we'll get to another 1,000 soon. Lickety split. Yeah. Be fun. It's, it's at the point where I don't, I can't even really think about it because it kind of freaks me out a little bit. It's, you know... <laughs> exciting i honestly never thought we would be even close to this many people <laughs> watching us <laughs> so it's a little little bit intimidating <laughs> but fun at the same time this is my uh pigment pen the fb sakura one it's down the link is down in the description for that too if you want it uh it's a fine fine pen it's uh, waterproof and light fast so it won't fade like a sharpie will and you can varnish right over it so anyhow all right, there's our finished wreath. Hope you guys do this. Uh, if you do it with me, uh, share the link down in the social media links down in the description there. Uh, click on the show more and it'll take you to that. And uh, if you want to see some of my other videos, you can click on my name or my photograph and it'll take you to my channel homepage. And you can go up to, into the, at the top, there's kind of a uploads button. I think it says videos or uploads or something like that. You can click on that and it'll show you all. We've got, I think, about 200 videos now. So uh, all kinds of different videos for all different levels and playlists too for different levels. So if you know you want to look at flowers, you can look for the playlist for flowers and 
Is there a tank playlist? There's not a tank playlist yet. Okay. But I think we're going to have a wreath playlist because I did another wreath last year, last Christmas time, that's got the red berries with the wood background. And I think we're going to do one for Christmas this year, too. We're going to do like a holly berry wreath and maybe with some pine cones and stuff like that. And then maybe in the spring we'll do some one for Easter and that kind of thing. So we're going to do a whole wreath series, I think. So anyhow, so be looking for those. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you Tuesday night for another video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.